The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Many of us have heard these words from the inaugural speech Franklin D. Roosevelt gave in 1933. Though almost nobody alive today heard these words as they were spoken, the power of this notion has endured through time. It was the power of this assertion that lifted our nation out of the devastating Great Depression and pushed us through a world war. When President Roosevelt spoke these words, the nation was in some of its darkest days. A man could work every day for 16 hours a day and still worry if he's earned enough to feed his family. What are we afraid of today? Some of us are afraid of losing our health care, care they need to survive. They're afraid of losing the rights they've been fighting for, which now threaten to be reversed. They're afraid that this country they struggled to reach, a place where they might find safety, will now begin to hunt them down and send them back to places they sought to escape. They're afraid that our new government will slowly but surely destroy the international relationships we've steadily cultivated over the past few decades, and that the resulting destabilization will have far-reaching consequences. And they're afraid that the short-sighted policies in favor of large corporations will destroy our natural resources, and that we'll never recover from what we've lost. They're afraid that the very notion of truth, of the value of empirical evidence, is being eroded. Others are afraid that jobs are being lost to foreign countries or to automation. They're afraid that the moral fabric of our country is unraveling. They're afraid that crime is on the rise and that those whose job it is to maintain order are themselves being targeted by violence. They're afraid that the unstable and violent regions in other parts of the world are spilling over into the relative safety of our country. They're afraid that our information is being controlled, that the news media can't be trusted. They're afraid that people of other cultures, other countries, other languages, other races will never assimilate into our culture as it is, but that instead these people seek to make this country more like the places they come from. They're afraid that they're needing to work twice as hard so that other people get a free ride. We are afraid. We're afraid of other countries. We're afraid of each other. We're afraid of the future. We're afraid of failure. We're afraid of cancer, of mosquitoes, of the weather, of the sun. We're afraid to speak up lest we invite an argument. We're afraid of our neighbors. We're afraid of so much. Some of it's justified, some of it's irrational, but either way we let that fear guide us to isolate ourselves, to become paralyzed and small and silent. But we can't. We can't let our fear drive our actions. We have to act. We have to stand up and to speak up and to speak out. We have to face the day and live and have an impact on the world to talk to and change the people around us because the alternative is to barely live at all. Some people, maybe many, won't want to hear what you have to say, but some will and some may listen. And those few that may listen are more than would have been affected if you had simply stayed silent. We, each of us, have to strive for peace and prosperity, to work with other people, even if doing so costs us time or money or our health or our lives, because these things, peace and prosperity, these are things worth sacrificing for. Our time, our wealth, our lives, these things are all destined to be taken away from us someday, no matter what we do. Given that, we have a duty to use them towards something worthwhile. And I think we'll find, in doing so, that the risk to ourselves was not so great as we first imagined. That putting our trust in the humanity of others will prove true more often than not. We will be afraid. There will always be something to fear. To lack any fear is to be a fool. President Roosevelt wasn't saying that we should not be afraid, only that we should be wary of that fear, to not let it control our actions. 
we must master our fears because if we don't, our fears will master us. Fight your fears. Open yourself to the world. Pour yourself as much as you can into fighting for a brighter future. This isn't a task for a few people at the top. This is a task for everyone. Changing our culture of fear will take a concerted effort. That's what I've been thinking about lately. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.